the RCMP's new commissioner today very strong words about what he wants to do. Bob Paulson says his first order of business will be dealing with sexual harassment allegations within the force. Uh, he announced three crucial steps today. Uh, number one, he says that uh, he is changing the structure of the RCMP's senior ranks. He wants his senior officers to track and monitor all cases of sexual harassment in the force. Uh, number two, once an offender is identified, they will be uh, immediately or almost immediately suspended without pay, without allowances. They will have their gun and their badge taken and there will be no presumption of innocence in this uh, scenario. And number three, in terms of changing the structure of the RCMP, they want to increase the number, he wants to increase the number of women in senior ranks to 35% and also in general increase the number of women in the force and he thinks this will get to the problems. He doesn't want any outside help. He says he could do himself. A CBC exclusive caused this issue to explode last month. That's when former BC RCMP spokesperson Catherine Galliford made the allegations of sexual misconduct. Remember, she was the face of the RCMP in British Columbia for the missing women investigation and also uh, Air India. She gave us her reaction. She's on leave now. She gave us her reaction to the new commissioner and what he says he's going to do. One of the problems that we've had in the past is that the harassers, and the sexual abusers, what has happened to them is that they've just been transferred. So they take their problems to another detachment or another unit, and then they continue on with the same behavior. So I like the idea that it would, the behavior would be tracked. I, I don't think that there is a lot of public trust in the RCMP right now, but internally there isn't a lot of trust toward senior management. And so, uh, you know, I, I think he's on the right track. Do I believe him? Yes, I do. Do I think it's going to be very hard for him to make changes? Absolutely. Because the RCMP is still very archaic. And people within the RCMP are very entrenched in their culture, the way they've been trained. Um, the way they've learned how to do things, but I, I think that Commissioner Paulson is on the right track. All right. Well, we, Sherry Lee Benson Podolchuk is another woman who says she experienced harassment within the RCMP. In 2007, the former Mountie wrote a book called Women Not Wanted, a book alleging years of misconduct while stationed while she was stationed in Saskatchewan. She joins me now with her thoughts on what, what uh, Bob Paulson had to say today. Uh, Sherry Lee Benson, what do you think? Um, good afternoon. Well, I think uh, Commissioner Paulson does, in fact, have uh, a lot to do uh, with regards to changing the, the uh, entrenched culture of the RCMP. I, I don't know him personally, so I can't really comment on um, his honesty or whatever, but I know he will try. It's just that the Commissioner is not on, he doesn't have much control over the frontline detachment commanders who, in my experience, um, were the ones who were the, uh, the abusers. Okay. Tell me uh, some of your experience. Tell me, uh, uh, give me an example of what happened to you as a young female officer. Well, I, was a, uh, I joined the RCMP in 1989. I was a single mom on welfare and I joined with the hopes of having a great career and making a better life for my daughter. The first few months were relatively fine. I enjoyed uh, the, I really enjoyed the, the, the general public, working with the public. But after a while, there were some changes in the detachments and, and new officers came in and uh, that's when the name calling began. And um, we're trained to sort of accept what's, you know, in training, the corporals are the boss and you never, you know, never challenge the command. So I was quite leery about telling my boss, my supervisor, also the same person who was doing my assessment to stop calling me certain names that were rather derogatory. Can you repeat what the names are? Well, uh, the names were, uh, he called me, the, he and another officer referred to me as beaver or raisin tits. Oh, and, God. Okay. And so that was a little, that was very humiliating, not only in the office, but also on the radio when other officers from different detachments were in town. And when I was in general public, they would refer to me as that. And I found my credibility as an officer was being diminished. When I asked them to stop, they didn't. So I just went to my, uh, my 
the detachment commander, and he said, well, maybe you enjoy the attention, Whoa. which, of course, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Well, did it stop at the name-calling, or were there other instances of, of where you felt uh, harassed? Well, um, after the first year, one of my a senior partner I was working with came to work um, drunk out of his head. When I wanted to give him a ride home, he refused. He left the detachment and got in a car accident. And later when, we, when I spoke to him about it, he wanted me to lie for him, which I refused. And he handed in his statement, and I handed in mine, and he was eventually charged with impaired driving. And as a result of doing the right thing, um, I was ostracized by, by the other officers, and um, that's when the harassment really started, and the alienation. Okay, the alienation. When you hear uh, Bob Paulson say, look, once an offender is identified, we are going to move forward, take their guns and badges, you know, give them a few days to, to convince us that they were not the ones who did this or said this. Uh, but otherwise, there will be no presumption of, in, of innocence here. And we're, on top of that, we're going to increase the number of women within the force and at the senior ranks. What do you think? Do you think that's enough to get at the problem inside the RCMP? I'm not sure. I, I, uh, from my experience and uh, what I wrote about, um, it, I think getting more women for sure is a good idea. I mean, I look at Catherine. She was the, the face of the RCMP for so many years, and she was a corporal. She was admired and respected. And if people around her are willing to harass her, what chance does a junior officer coming straight out of the depot, what chance does she have in an isolated community? So I'm, not, I'm a little leery about that. Um, and I'm not sure if having 10 women in one detachment is the problem. I think um, the, the policies they have are, are effective, but they just, they're not enforced. And my concern is, for, sure, they can enforce the policy and fire people and take the badges, but what happens to the officer left behind? And, and she's there by herself, knowing that because of, you know, for some reason this person harassed her and the other, another officer has been fired. How is she going to be treated? My, that's my concern. Mm -hmm. And what happened to you in the end? Well, in the end, I was transferred out, and I went to uh, Selkirk, and then I was injured in a shotgun accident. And so my harassment changed from sexual harassment to abuse of power for the final 12 years of my service. Abuse of power? What do you mean? Well, um, I was uh, injured, like I said, mm -hmm. and I, my shoulder was uh, permanently damaged in a shotgun training accident. and. After a couple of years of surgeries and physiotherapy, the doctor said, well, it's a permanent injury. You can't, you, know, you won't be able to return to frontline duties. And as a result, the RCMP uh, started the medical discharge process. And I noticed during this, the next six years, that they had accommodated men um, in, uh, who had been injured in the line of duty as well as on their private time. But they didn't want to accommodate me. I didn't think that was fair, so I started to fight. And I got two lawyers who were absolutely fantastic. They're from Manitoba, and they helped me um, get to the very end in, back to 2009. You sued and settled with the RCMP. That's correct. Okay. All right, we'll leave it there. Former RCMP officer Sherry Lee Benson Podolchuk, thank you for joining me from Winnipeg.